What's up everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson and today we are back with another entry in the Emacs desktop environment series. And today we're going to talk about uh, how to use multiple displays or multiple monitors with EXWM. Uh, so as always, this is a live stream. So I just want to say hello to all the people who are uh, here today. And I'm sorry that the stream started up a little bit late. We're about 10 minutes late this morning because I had some trouble getting my uh, QMU VM to do multiple displays correctly, but I realized I did something stupid and forgot uh, an important uh, piece of configuration, and now it's all working fine, so we're ready to go. So let me just jump over to my screen here, and we can get started. Okay, so um, EXWM has uh, built-in support for multiple monitors uh, via the EXWM Render module. Um, so what this means is that EXWM can make use of multiple monitors, but it doesn't actually configure multiple monitors for you. You're going to have to do a little bit of work to uh, set up the uh, configuration of displays so that um, EXWM can make use of them. And usually what you do for this is to use a tool like XRandr, uh, or maybe it's XRandr, I don't really know exactly how that's supposed to be pronounced, but this is how I say it. And then also ARandr, which you've seen used probably, I think it was in the first uh, video for the Emacs desktop environment series, excuse me, the e first Emacs desktop environment video. Uh, so uh, we are going to continue on that path of using XRandr, ARandr to configure multiple displays and then set up EXWM to use those uh, displays to assign workspaces to them. Uh, I just want to say hello to some folks in the chat here. Uh, Jerry, uh, Lazo, Glenn, and uh, Adolfo, thanks a lot for joining. So um, one thing to mention about um, EXWM and how it deals with workspaces on multiple displays is um, how it differs from other window managers. Um, there was some questions on the previous few videos we've had, I believe it was by uh, Jeff Bowman, asking about um, how they are supposed to work because it seems a little bit different from uh, window managers that you might be used to, like let's say Xmonad, DWM, uh, i3, etc. Um, so in some window managers, what you'll see is that whenever you have your numbered workspaces like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., uh, whenever you switch to a particular workspace number, both or all of your screens will switch to that number of workspace. Uh, the difference between that and EXWM is that um, in EXWM, a single number goes to a single display. So whenever you set up multiple monitors in EXWM, you're going to set up assignments for uh, a particular workspace, like Workspace 2 will go to my secondary display, Workspace 3 will go to a third display if you have one, etc. Uh, and those workspaces will be pinned to those displays. So whenever you hit Workspace 1, you'll see whatever screen that has Workspace 1 assigned to it, that will change, but the other screens will not change. Um, so that can be a little disorienting to people who are used to the, the behavior of other window managers. So I just want to make you aware of that so that you know, you know, whenever you see that happening at EXWM, that's why. Um, it is possible that you could come up with a library for EXWM, and maybe somebody else has already done it. Um, if, if someone knows about this, please uh, let me know in the comments or in the chat. Uh, but basically to allow you to do like virtual workspaces where you could... Um, say for workspace one, if you switch to workspace one, it actually switches one display to workspace one and another display to workspace two so that you have sort of that continuity between all of your displays to ha have like a, you know, coordinated workspaces between displays. But like I said, that functionality is not built in by default. So it would have to come through some custom code or an external package. And it may turn out that I try to make a package like that in the future because I've got some ideas for how, you know, managing multiple workspaces in EXWM could be better. So uh, we might see that in the future, maybe in another stream or something like that. Um, so uh, another thing uh, that is interesting about this is that you know, switching to a workspace will move your focus to the display that it's assigned to. Uh, I, I kind of like this actually. I, I like the way that workspaces work in EXWM because I have gotten used to having that sort of single workspace um, per screen type of paradigm uh, set up so that I can have independent screens with their own workspaces, their own setups. So um, if you can get used to this kind of workspace workflow, then uh, it can work pretty well for you. Uh, it might be pretty, pretty efficient. 
All right, so let's move on to trying to enable a second display. So I'm gonna switch over to my VM that we've been working in so far for the uh, for the series. Um, and this time I'm doing it a little bit differently. What I'm in, what I'm doing is uh, using a program called Vert Viewer. And uh, the benefit of this Vert Viewer program, at least for my purposes, is that it allows you to emulate multiple displays. Um, and I've got my VM set up to, to enable that basically. So uh, right now we've only got a single display, but I'm gonna turn on the second display right now, display number two. And I'm also going to uh, split this window vertically so we can see them both at the same time. If I can get uh, the XWM2 cooperate, remote viewer two. Okay, so now you can see we have uh, two screens side by side. Uh, one is not turned on yet because we haven't actually turned it on. So what we're gonna do is jump into uh, a render and uh, we are gonna go to the view menu, or sorry, the outputs menu, and we have virtual two here that's currently not active, but I'm going to make it active. And then I'm gonna just move it over a little bit. Well, it doesn't let me yet, maybe. Uh, let's go ahead and apply. I'm gonna click the check mark to apply the, the screens. So now we see that basically the, the views are duplicated across the screens. Uh, I'm gonna move this a little bit and see if I can get it to, to cooperate now. Uh, and I'm also going to change the resolution of both of these screens to be a little bit more effective for the stream so that we can see what's happening on both better. So I'll change both of these to 1024 by 768. I would imagine that all of you will probably use a uh, different resolution because who uses that, that screen size anymore? All right, so now we can see that we have uh, two screens side by side that are set up. Um, however, only the first screen is um, uh, active. Let me... See if I can change workspaces here. There we go. So I'm changing workspaces and only something is happening on the left screen. And that's because we haven't yet told EXWM how to use the second screen that has gotten set up. So um, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this uh, screen configuration that we created in, in uh, a render, whoops. So that we can uh, use it whenever we start up our um, uh, EXWM session. So I'm going to use save as, I'm going to call this dual.sh. And uh, by default, a render is saving your configurations to the dot screen layout folder. So once you save this, then you'll be able to go and open up that file in dot screen layout dual. And then just basically copy this whole line of the X render. You'll see that it basically, uh, we can't really maximize this very easily because we don't have any space for it. But uh, you can see that we have uh, the virtual output one turned on and set the primary with a screen resolution. And it was also have virtual output two turned on uh, with another screen resolution. So basically this line just tells X render, hey, I have these displays, turn them on, uh, set the resolution to what I asked you to, and then put them in this position. Basically the display one is to the, to the, to the left and display two is to the right. So when I take this, I can put that into the uh, desktop.org. We've already got a call for X render when we start up EXWM um, so that we set the initial screen resolution, but we can basically just uh, copy and paste this line and comment out the old version for now, and then go paste this into that X render spot there. Whoops. All right, let me just uh, do some surgery here for a second. All right, so now we have uh, our start process shell command that's gonna invoke X render. I can just run this again and it will just do the same thing. It will just you know set the screen configuration to the same one. Um, Eric said, I think we missed the start intro. I hope not. Uh, I think that uh, we had an, an issue with the stream at the beginning, but I think we're okay now. All right, so um, now if we exit out of our EXWM session, we'll see that this actually does retain itself. We've, we've saved the configuration. So now uh, we can boot back into EXWM um, if this thing decides it wants to reconnect. We, we may have some trouble here, so I might have to do a little bit of on the fly fixes because uh, for some reason this machine is acting differently than my other machine. As usual, I think every episode I, ha I happen to say that. Um, so I will uh, quit out of this really quickly and go back to the vert manager UI so that I can get back into the screen to do something with it. Open, please. Okay, I may have to, to power cycle the VM. Yeah, I don't like the way that this happens sometimes. If I could force reboot it or something. Force reset, let's go. 
And another thing that uh, turns out to be the case is there's some kind of uh, agent software that has to be running on the VM so that it will um, do the virtual displays properly. So I have to make sure that's that's working whenever we get back into it. Hopefully we don't have a trouble with, trouble with this again. So let's see if I can connect to this. Okay, good. And I will try to set up the second display again, if it cooperates. All right, so now I will put that here, remote viewer two. Oh, great. I, I really hope this is not gonna be a persistent issue. Okay, I may have to, to uh, not log out again if I can get this working, because for some reason it's uh, not cooperating. Let's turn them both off and then back on. Okay, ask me if I want to close the session. That's fantastic. I'm trying to think of the right way to deal with the situation. I think that maybe I need to not have the second display turned on whenever I log in, because then we uh, can avoid running into the issue that we had. Okay, so that's working now. Let's see if I can log in with that. Okay. So probably we'll have some interesting behavior whenever this does activate X Render because the other screen would um, would work. Uh, Jeff Bowman asks, would EXWM restart work better than log off, log on? Uh, probably so. I think I'll, I'll try that because um, I don't want to have any further trouble with this. Let's try running dis Display 2 and see if it, cr if, if it crashes and burns. Remote 2. Thank you for not causing problems. Now let's try um, running the, the XRander command directly this time. And then we'll, we'll try to limp along here as best as we can because I don't want to lose... Uh, the usefulness of the video because of the uh, these strange issues with this VM. Okay, let's try running this one more time. Oops. Okay, now we're back to where we were. Great. Okay, so let's talk about uh, workspace monitor assignment. So there is a variable called EXWM render workspace plist, which is what controls which workspaces go to which monitors. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, and it's a little bit hard to see because we, we got some wrapping going on here, but I'm gonna pull up the documentation for EXWM render workspace monitor plist. And what it says is that um, it is a plist mapping workspaces to monitors. And if you don't remember what a plist is in Emacs, it's basically a list where there are pairs of values uh, in, in sequence. Uh, the first value is the key and the second value is the value. So uh, we have the key of two with a value of virtual two, the key of three with a value of virtual two also. And uh, in this case, basically what it means is uh, for workspace two, we want to map that to the monitor or the display called virtual two, and also the same thing for virtual for uh, workspace three. Uh, for any workspaces that you do not specify in this p list, it will default to the primary display, which in my case is virtual one. So I'm not specifying workspace zero or workspace one because I want it to just default to that. So it makes it a little bit easier to configure your display configuration if you only have a couple of workspaces that you want to send to a secondary display. And uh, then everything else will go to your primary. Uh, another uh, important thing to mention here is that you can set this anytime. It doesn't have to be whenever you have multiple displays active because um, whenever there's only a single display active, EXWM would just say, okay, let's just put all the workspaces on the same display because there's not another display to put them on. And as you might tell right now, because I don't have this set, the secondary display doesn't have any workspaces assigned to it. So we first need to uh, evaluate this variable so I'm going to evaluate this with control X, control E. And now we need to run the EXWM render refresh command so that it will actually update our workspace configuration based on the displays we've configured. So as soon as I run that, now we see that we have uh, uh, frames on both screens. And the uh, on, on this screen, if I uh, switch to work, workspace zero or workspace one, then you'll see that my focus still remains on the left screen. But if I switch to workspace two, 
my focus jumps over to the right screen. Same thing for Workspace 3, it stays in the right screen. So this shows you that with multiple displays active at the same time, the workspaces you've assigned to a particular display will only be the thing that changes on that display whenever you jump to that workspace. So you'll see that workspace change. Uh, it's also a nice way to switch between screens. So if you have Workspace 1 and then Workspace 2, you can just jump back and forth between those to focus the different screens just by changing the workspace. I find that to be pretty helpful for my, for my workflow. So let's move on to the, the next thing, which would be, um, so there's a way that you can do something called mouse warping, which is helpful whenever you have this setup where you have, you know, workspaces on different screens. Um, and if you want the mouse to also follow whenever you uh, jump to the other screen. So that this feature is called mouse warping. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for me since I'm using this in a VM, but it does work whenever you are using it on um, a, an actual com computer configuration with multiple, multiple displays that's not virtual. So uh, if we look at the documentation for that, it says XWM uh, warp, uh, workspace warp cursor, that's what it is. Uh, if it's true, it will warp the cursor automatically after workspace switch. And basically what that means is it's going to put the, the, the mouse cursor in the center of the screen for the workspace whenever you switch that workspace. So uh, let's say you have uh, on your left screen, you have, you're have you writing some code, and then on your right screen, you have uh, Spotify or some like graphical player that you need to click something on whenever you want to change to it. If you change to, if you turn the setting on and you change to that secondary workspace, uh, then the mouse will just be there ready for you to click on whatever it is that you need to click on on the screen, which is pretty helpful. Um, I believe this does need to be set before you initiate the XWM session, but um, this may be one of the ones that doesn't need it, but I, I would do that anyway, like set it up in your configuration before you uh, do the, um, uh, before you call it EXWM enable. So let me just drop this in so that we have it for later so I can commit it. So then also uh, related to the mouse, there is the ability to have focus follow the mouse. So um, this definitely needs to be uh, configured before EXWM enable because uh, otherwise it will not uh, work with um, with X Windows system windows, like normal program windows. So if we put this in our configuration, let me just move this back over to this side because it's a little bit annoying to me. We'll go to scratch on this side or something. Okay, so um, we're going to drop this in right here. And I'm going to... Well, you can, we can run this, but it's actually not going to take effect until after we restart the EXWM session. So um, right here, uh, if I look at the, the description for this variable, mouse auto select window, this is actually a variable that comes from, from Emacs. Um, it says uh, non-nil means auto select window with mouse pointer. And um, yes, that's right. So basically what it means is if you set that to true, if you move your mouse over another window in Emacs, and like if you remember from the, the video earlier this week about window management in Emacs, you know, Emacs windows are these regions on the screen that have a buffer in them. If you move your mouse over the buffer, then it will focus that buffer automatically. Um, so right now you can see it's not turned on because the focus is not changing. However, if we do um, evaluate this with control X, control E, and I move my mouse over this buffer, then the, the focus automatically changes to that buffer which can be nice if uh, you use the mouse somewhat in your workflow and you want it to, auto to sort of track where you're, you're pointing at. Um, however, it can be a little bit annoying sometimes. So for me, I, I keep that variable turned off. Uh, however, focus follows mouse is pretty important for uh, things acting like you would expect them to in a window manager. So uh, this is also a variable that comes with Emacs. It's not part of EXWM. And um, it says non-nil if window system changes focus when you move the mouse. Now, I'm not sure if EXWM is picking up on this variable and is changing its own behavior, but I think this is really meant for saying what your own window manager does, like if you're using some other window manager that's not EXWM. However, in the case of EXWM, what it will do is make it so that when you have another application running, uh, like let's say uh, Sol, the, the Solitaire game, uh, maybe it popped up on uh, number three. So. If we move our cursor back over to the screen, you can see that I'm changing focus whenever I hover over either of these windows. But when I put my, my mouse over the the um, the program window, it doesn't change focus. And that's because EXWM is not currently handling that focus change when I move the mouse. Um, you do have to turn that setting on before you start EXWM. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So I'm going to try real quick to use EXWM restart to see if it uh, allows us to uh, make this work and if it doesn't work we're gonna have trouble for a few minutes but I think we can get set back to where we need to be so let me let me say yes to this 
restart EXWM, yes. All right, so we're starting over. Let's see what it does. Okay, I think it may have crashed the desktop environment, but that's okay. So long as it uh, turns back on, it'll be fine. All right, I think I'm gonna have to cycle this real quick and make it work again. Sorry for that. But I think when we turn it back on, it should be working as we would expect. So let's just force reboot this uh, VM. It would be nice if it was possible to do like real multiple monitor setup uh, with my computer, but since I already have multiple monitors, monitors working and uh, you can't see them because of OBS, um, it doesn't work like that at the moment. So unfortunately we have to make do with the VM setup, but it seems to be working well enough aside from the, the glitches here and there. So I think it's a, a fine compromise. And also if you, anyone in, in the chat has questions or suggestions, please feel free to, uh, to, to let me know while we're sitting and waiting for the Computer reboot again. Let's go Ubuntu. Here we go. All right. So let me log back in one more time. And now, once we get uh, logged back in, I will activate that second display. And then we should be able to see the focus change whenever I hover over the, um, the graphical window takes a moment for it to wake back up. All right, here we go. Let's turn on the secondary display. And now I will look at remote two. Cool. Now I can reopen the desktop.org file. I can go find my xrander call whenever it decides to start searching. There we go. And I will use control X, control E to evaluate this. All right, now we're set back up with two screens again. Now I'm gonna run uh, Sol one more time. And uh, it's on, okay, this time it's hiding, which is great. Let me close this window. Let's use EXWM uh, switch to buffer. Oh, okay, so apparently just completely didn't start. Yes. All right, so let's run Mahjong maybe. I'll use a different thing to run that to. Council, oh, there we go. Somehow, who knows why, I don't know. Sometimes we have issues with this uh, workspace switch buffer. Give me Sol, there we are. Okay, finally. Now, if I move the, the mouse cursor back to the left side, we'll see that the focus goes back to the left window and I move the cursor to the right side again. Now we do get the focus uh, placed appropriately inside of that window. And that's a, a, a important because we want the keyboard focus to also be there so that when I hit alt, well, this time it's not actually doing it. Oh, no, it worked. So that your keyboard focus goes to that program window so that whenever you start typing in that window and you think you have focus, but you don't, then you start typing somewhere else and you call it, you wreak havoc on your files. Uh, it's, it's useful to uh, make sure that the focus automatically gets applied to that window. So I, I highly recommend having the focus follows mouse setting turned on in EXWM. However, that other setting we were looking at, um, the, well, oops. What was it called? Let me fix this real quick. I did something wrong. Okay. Uh, the other setting was uh, mouse auto select window. Um, personally, I don't use that one, but uh, but you might like it. So uh, definitely check that out if you are interested in trying that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a much more important topic right now when it comes to managing multiple displays. And that is uh, whenever you have a laptop and you need to dock it or undock it. So um, a lot of desktop environments like GNOME or KDE will automatically manage this for you whenever you are plugging your uh, computer into a docking station or maybe just plugging it into like an HDMI cable to go to another, another screen. Uh, they make it pretty smooth for this uh, process, but you'll notice that in EXWM, whenever you like plug in a monitor, it doesn't automatically uh, set up the, the configuration correctly as you would want it to. However, we can do this the same way. Uh, we just have to do a couple of extra things to do that. Um, now there's a, uh, let's see. I, I wanted to try disconnecting the display uh, live, but I'm worried that if I do that, we're gonna have trouble. So I might try it right now and see what happens. We've got them both set up. I'm gonna try to disconnect the, the second display. Okay, cool. So now we, did, we, we turn the second display off. So imagine we undock the computer right now. So I'm gonna try to jump to uh, workspace number two. 
and you see I can't get there anymore. And that's because um, EXWM still thinks that the um, the second screen is turned on. That's because we haven't refreshed its uh, its configuration yet. Now, if I run, um, let me get out of that. If I run EXWM uh, render refresh, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't pick it up because still like the, it, the X window system still like is configured to have that display turned on even though it's not currently available. So what we need to do is go into uh, a render and turn it back off again. So if we go to output, so we can turn off that uh, display. And now if I close this, I think that, yeah, uh, now uh, EXWM has noticed that this, this uh, configuration has changed and it's switched everything back to the, the first screen. So um, that is one thing that you need to know is that it won't figure it out on its own. So um, there is a hook that you can use that, uh, EXWM is, can be aware of when the screen configuration changes so that you can do something when that happens. And there is a hook for that, which is called, uh, oops, wrong Emacs. Uh, it's called EXWM uh, render, that's functions, EXWM render screen change hook. So this is a hook you can use that will be invoked anytime the uh, EXWM detects that the screens have changed somehow. So, um, uh, another thing that we can use for this, I mean, obviously we don't want to have to go into a render every time and then turn that display back off and then refresh our configuration and all that stuff. It's going to be like a real pain to do that. So what we can do is use um, a program called auto render, which will allow us to save window or display configurations and then automatically apply them based on which, which displays are currently connected. So uh, what we're going to do, and I didn't do this before I sat down here, but we're going to do it now. I'm going to install the auto render program. I believe that auto render is available on most Linux distributions, but if it's not, you can go to their uh, GitHub repository and uh, download the Python file. This is a, a project written in Python. And I believe you can just copy the Python file and run it uh, with maybe Python 2 and have the same functionality. So it's pretty portable. You don't, you don't have to worry about ha not having it in your uh, Linux distros package manager. So I'm gonna use sudo apt install auto render and we'll see how long this takes. Probably won't take very long. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to save a configuration for the single screen and we're going to call it mobile because, you know, it's like we're imagining that we're, we have our laptop undocked and we're not plugged into any monitors at the moment. So I'll use auto render and uh, we call it save and mobile. So we're saving a profile called mobile. And if you go look in your, your config folder, dot config slash auto render uh, it will have your mobile configuration there with a couple of configuration files and you can check these into source control which is really nice because they're just text files uh, effectively what they do is they, they save the uh, the configuration of the displays at that given moment and then whenever you tell auto render to change the configuration, it will go look at all these files and find the one that actually matches which displays are currently turned on and then it will uh, activate a configuration. So, uh, if you have, if you have multiple docking stations or multiple monitor setups that you use, uh, like if you take your laptop from, from home to work, etc., uh, it will notice the right config or it will find the right configuration based on what displays are commonly active on that machine. So if you have different types of displays at work versus at home, uh, often it will pick the right configuration, which is pretty nice. So now that we've saved that configuration, let's go ahead and try to uh, add back our secondary display. Hopefully this works. Okay, so now with the secondary display, I can go into a render and then add that secondary display back. I'll put it back where it belongs. I'll change the resolution to what I want it to be. 1024 by 768. I will apply this configuration I will exit out of a render and now I will use uh, auto render save docked. So now I have a second configuration and we can com uh, confirm this by running just auto render. I believe it will tell us what configurations are here. It says that docked is the current configuration and it's detected and then mobile is the, uh, the other configuration that we have saved. So uh, if I run auto render change, then it won't do anything because it already has the configuration set. Uh, and also we can, I think we can use auto render change mobile and it will turn on the mobile configuration. So you can, you can um, manually set which one is currently active.
Uh, and as you might notice, whenever I'm, I'm turning these on and off, uh, the workspace configuration actually is being applied by EXWM whenever it notices that the window configurations have changed. So that's a really nice uh, thing to have there. So once you've got your variable set up for where the display should go, then anytime you turn off and on displays using auto render, uh, EXWM will automatically move them to the right place. Okay, let's see what else you wanted to say about that. So uh, now what we want to do is use that uh, EXWM render screen change hook to invoke auto render to update the screens whenever EXWM detects that something has changed. So we're going to uh, create a new function called uh, EFS slash update displays, and we're going to copy this over to our configuration. So I'm going to drop this in under some of our other hook functions. Probably need to clean this stuff up at some point because it's getting a little bit uh, stacked in here. I'll drop this function here. And uh, what this is doing, and it's using our uh, EFS run in background helper function we already defined, is to call auto render change force. Now, the reason why I use force here is because sometimes whenever a screen gets unplugged, um, auto render doesn't necessarily de uh, detect it properly and it won't run the configuration. So what you're doing here is basically saying, all right, I want you to just make sure you, you reevaluate the whole situation and run the right configuration every time rather than sort of like trying to be intelligent about it. Um, so it, that just makes things a little bit more consistent. Uh, and we're also going to write a message uh, to the, the mode line or to the echo area to say what the current uh, display configuration is. So what I'm doing here is using the uh, shell command to string function to call auto render current. And then I'm formatting that into this um, string of display config so that whenever the, the configuration changes, you can see a message in the uh, the echo area whenever it happens. Now, you may not like that, so you can definitely take this out if you don't want that behavior. I'm going to evaluate this function using control X and control E. And I'm also going to go uh, copy this little snippet to uh, set up the hook for this function. So uh, inside of uh, the EXWM use package declaration, I'm going to go after our EXWM render enable, and I'm going to paste this in. And basically what we are doing here is we are attaching to the uh, EXWM render screen change hook. We're calling EFS update displays. And then in our startup, we're going to call EFS update displays directly. So what this is going to do is when we boot into EXWM, it's automatically going to, going to call auto render and pick the right configuration based on um, what uh, monitor setup we have. So if you have just booted into your system, like you, maybe you rebooted after updating your system and you're plugged into your docking station, this will make sure that it um, sets up the right screen configuration once you log into Emacs or EXWM. Same thing if you are just using your laptop and not um, uh, not connected to any external displays. It will just do the right thing. So we want to make sure this gets run at startup. I'm also commenting out the, the original X render call that we have because we don't need it anymore now that we're using auto render. So um, now, let's see, I, I should be able to test this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up the hook for the screen change hook. I'm also going to uh, run update displays. And now we can see uh, we have that message in the mini buffer of the uh, display. What, what, what did it say? Uh, display config docked. So now it knows it's docked. So I'm going to go ahead and just disable this display one more time. And now uh, it should have said, here we go. Okay, it, it did update the screens. It just took a second. And if we go back to the uh, messages buffer, you'll see that it wrote, wrote uh, display config mobile. So uh, now we know that the mobile config has been activated and I can go switch to all my workspaces. Uh, similarly, if I turn display two back on, then we'll see that it automatically gets uh, activated. And in our uh, messages buffer, we see display config docked. So um, this hook is successfully uh, telling us when the screens are changing and auto render is taking care of updating our screen configurations whenever uh, the config changes. Hey, Alex. So um, that is super useful to have, and it makes it very easy because you don't have to do a lot of manual scripting of X render to set the right configuration settings. However, if you, for some reason, you can't use auto render or it doesn't work correctly for you, or maybe you don't, don't want to use auto render, uh, you can definitely set up your own uh, script to update the screens yourself. Uh, this also is a kind of useful thing if you have multiple machines that you use and you want to have just one configuration file that does everything. Uh, you can look at my script that I've been using in the past. I'll probably switch to auto render, but uh, in the past I've been using the script where I look at the host name of the machine and I run X render based on uh, what the 
uh, uh, what the screen, what the, the host name is. I basically just you know set up the screens that way. Now I've got a link to that in the show notes, so you don't have to look at that right now. But it's something that you can just sort of copy if you need something like that. Uh, what I do recommend though is if you want to use your, if you want to have the same configuration shared across multiple, multiple, excuse me, multiple machines. What you need to do is when you create your auto render profiles, make sure to put the machine name as a prefix in the name of the profile so that um, you can have multiple profiles saved for all your machines and then auto render, auto render will pick the right one based on what displays are available. So um, if that ends up becoming a problem for you, you might have to um, manually select which profile to load, but um, I've shown you how to do that. So hopefully that would be an option for you. Um, last thing we need to say is that um, you will need to make sure your wallpaper gets updated whenever you change to multiple displays. So if you can see right now, the wallpaper behind here actually is stretching the wallpaper across multiple displays. And that's because we haven't run the fe command again to set the wallpaper. So if I were to run the EFS set wallpaper command right now, you'll see that it actually updates. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing here. It will, it will update the, oh, come on. It keeps telling me end of file after parsing because uh, it doesn't realize I'm inside the, no, my VM. All right, now, okay. Now the backgrounds have updated on both screens so that you have the, the uh, background stretched to the right size of each screen. So uh, we want to add that function into our, uh, our hook function, the, which one was it called? Uh, update displays. I'm gonna put this in the, right after we call uh, auto render, we're gonna call EFS set wallpaper so that every time these, the display configuration changes, we're gonna update our wallpaper to make sure that stays in sync. And anything else in your desktop configuration that is based on which displays are active, you probably wanna run that here also just to make sure that um, everything is in sync the way it's supposed to be. All right, so let's see, what else do we have here? Um, okay, so last thing I want to say is if you want to do some extra stuff for per machine configuration, let's say that uh, at home you have two displays, but at work you have three displays, or uh, maybe you have two different machines that you're kind of trying to uh, share configuration between, like I do, I have three machines that I'm using the same config files for. Uh, maybe you want to set your uh, EX, EXWM render workspace monitor P list differently based on which machine you're currently using. Uh, once again, we can use the friendly p case function and then use Emacs system name function to find out what the name of the current system is. So if I were to run this here, uh, you can see that it tells me my system name is Phantom. And uh, looking at the documentation for that function, it will tell you the host name of the machine you're running on as a string. Um, so you can use this easily to set these values. So basically, I'm, I'm calling set Q for this variable, but I'm using pcase to choose the result value based on which machine I'm using and whatever list here just passes right through based on which machine it is. So if you need to set different workspace configs per machine, this is the way to do it. Um, also, if you have one machine that gets docked into multiple places that have different screen configs, you may want to use the output of auto render current instead, like I mentioned here. I don't know how visible this text is right now. Let's see, text scale adjust. Okay, that's good. Uh, use auto render dash test current here basically. So like we were doing before in, um, in this thing where we use shell commanded string auto render current, uh, if you trim the string, you should be able to tell or use that as the value here. So I could say doctor, mobile, etc., and then change the uh, workspace monitor P list based on that. So uh, that's a very useful trick you can use for making sure that your uh, workspace monitor P list is set correctly. However, after you change this, you're going to want to run XWM render refresh just to make sure that uh, you have um, the workspaces put to the right places. Refresh. Okay. All right, so I think that was it that I wanted to cover for uh, multiple monitor configuration today. Uh, if you have any other tips or things that you know of that are helpful for this, please definitely feel free to leave, leave them in the comments so that other people who are watching this video can go check those out. Uh, and also, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them because uh, we'll be happy to answer them, you know, myself or the other people who, who watch things here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, James Ferguson is very helpful on the EXWM post. He has a lot of good thoughts and ideas. So uh, he might be around there as well. 
Alrighty, so uh, finally today, I would like to thank uh, my GitHub sponsors. Um, these are the people who have decided to uh, uh, sponsor the efforts we have here for making uh, Emacs videos every week. Uh, so I just want to say thank you very much to all the folks who have sponsored so far. Uh, if you want to help sponsor the work that we do on this channel, uh, please go check out github.com slash sponsors slash Davey Will. And uh, there's a lot of more information there about you know what the sponsorship tiers are, etc. Uh, also, uh, there's a link in the description for PayPal if you want to do just a one-time tip or something like that. So, uh, yep, until next time, um, I think the next video we might start go ahead and cover things like a polybar, uh, you know, having a system panel, uh, stuff like that. So I think that would be very interesting. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining everybody today. And uh, until next time, happy hacking. Thanks a lot. See you next time.